Jackson State, in their 2023 recruiting class, has two four-stars. And this is not even February of 2023 yet. This is not even sign of day. In their first two signings of year 23, they have four stars. And guess who's mad about that? You guessed it. The HBCU haters. And I'll chime in. What's good, everyone? This is Raw Truth Media, giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. Please like and share this video. We're so close to 7,000 subs, 50 more subs to go. I want to thank you all for supporting this channel and making it to what it is today. And shout out to Phil Ross, who sent me the screenshot. Uh, due to respect of privacy, I took the names out, as you can see on the screen. And that's just how I operate. Uh, the only time I will show a full post of a screenshot is if it's a verified account or a journalist. You know, to, to point out where the source is coming from, that's the only time. So that's why I got that blurred out, out, out of respect. But Phil Ross told me that uh, he wanted me to show you this conversation. This was on 24-7 Sports. And 24-7 Sports reported that Isaiah Kendall committed to Jackson State. And here's the crazy part. It's not even February 2nd, 2023. And Jackson State has two four-star commits, Lockhart and now Isaiah Kendall. They're not even done recruiting. Can you imagine when it's all said and done? Oh, there's going to be more hating, which I love it. When you do something great, you're going to get hated on. It is what it is. But this is what this shine said on that 24-7 post. And I quote, I get that Travis Hunter committed because he wanted to be coached by Dion, but a wide receiver, his chances of being drafted just plummeted from the lack of competition. There goes that word, lack of competition. They did the same thing with uh, Marquise Bell. And now you see Marquise Bell intercepting the ball, it seems like every count standing out for the Dallas Cowboys should have been drafted. I repeat, should have been drafted, but we know how the game within the game goes. And we know how these politics run in the NFL. But shout out to Phil Ross for keeping it 1,000 in the post. And that's his comment on the bottom. He says, and I quote, another heartbroken fan, LLL. Lack of competition, but D2 players just got drafted and none from Arizona, West Virginia, Vanderbilt, SEC, TCU, Texas, Syracuse, Northwestern, Louisville, Duke, Colorado. Make it make sense. Again, shout out to the homie Phil Ross. I'm tired of the excuses. Talking about lack of competition. When I saw players who weren't even ranked in the top 300 get drafted before HBC prospects. Or players that didn't play against anybody in D2 got drafted. Stop with the excuses. We know what the jig is. And that's why Coach Prime and many other coaches, Hugh Jackson, Willie Simmons, Eric Dooley, Coach McNair, Coach Dansby. I would say all the coaches' names, but I'm, I, it would take me all day. Buddy Pugh. You, you know you got to put Buddy Pugh in that list. They're all creating change. And they're doing this together. Comments like that motivates me as a fan of HBCUs to support even more, to buy more. I've already done it. So the comments didn't factor in. But what it does is it, it makes me really put a spotlight 
on the progression of HBCUs. The HBCU renaissance is intimidating so many people because they know how great this could be. They know what this could turn into. Coach Prime is hosting a camp from June, I believe June 2nd or June 3rd. That's going to have a lot of people there, a lot of prospects. And guess what? All HBCUs, CIA, conference, FCS, you name it, is going to be there. So if a player doesn't go to Jackson State, but he has talent, he can go to your team. This is beneficial for all teams involved. This is what it's all about. Create a new future, a new destiny that has never been seen before. And for Isaiah Kendall, don't listen to the haters. And I know he's doing that right now. I know that a young athlete, what they're focused on is school, trying to win state for their high school team, prom, <laughs> stuff like that. They're not worried about these so-called fans, these haters who couldn't bust a grape in sports. All of a sudden wants to talk about a young man's decision. I repeat, a young man's decision to doing what's best for himself and his family. You want to know the great thing about HBCUs? And shout out to Swag Buzz because he, he talked about it with a so-called brother. Whoever was on the phone with him, I don't, I don't know if he was black or not. The brother Swag Buzz made a great point. And that is at HBCUs, no matter if you're an athlete or not, you're treated like family. That's always consistent. And whoever disagrees with that point, they most likely have not visited HBCUs enough. Because sometimes the most popular person at an HBCU may not be an athlete. It may be a leader of a dance team. It may be a fraternity leader or sorority leader or even a drum major. You never know at an HBCU, this is what you get. At an HBCU, you don't have to look over your shoulder all the time to see if campus uh, security is always watching. You don't have to deal with that. See at PWIs, and this is not an anti-PWI video, I'm just bringing a perspective. And uh, you know how raw truth is. We, we're not about the sensitivity. We're going to call it how it is. But you know when you go to a PWI, if you're not an athlete, you're just some everybody else. You're just another person. Unless you're a valedictorian, but in PWIs, the valedictorians do not get more shines than the athletes. They don't get more notoriety than the athletes. But at an HBCU, if you go to Howard or Hampton, if you're valedictorian, you are the person at the school. That is a fact. There's nothing like HBCUs. The food, the, the, the families that visit, the beautiful sisters who go to these universities. Ain't nothing like it. That's the best type of recruiting pitch. So I end by saying my message to other Power Fives and other PWIs, if you have a top recruit and if they're visiting Jackson State, Grambling, FAMU, many others, Alabama State, Bethune-Cookman, shout out to Bethune-Cookman, can't forget them. I, I know they lost a lot of games, but they were close in games. If you, if you have them go to their homecomings, they can sway their decisions, especially Coach Prime. You let a top recruit go to homecoming, it's almost over. Unless the school drops off a bag, which is a power five, that is. But it's almost over if he goes to homecoming. I guarantee it. 
So recruiting season has just arrived. This is fun. And I'm enjoying every minute of it. But no matter what the haters say, the momentum is going at a fast and rapid pace. And there's nothing they can do to stop it. This is Raw Truth Media, and I'm out.